Hello everybody and welcome back to the podcast Discover North Korea with me, Zoe from Zoe Discovers. This is already the third episode of this podcast and I am super excited to be continuing with it, to be honest. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I've had some really, really cool feedback from you guys. Feel free to keep sending it in. Um, make sure that it's constructive, but um, yeah, do go with the positive and negative feedback. I'm always happy to hear from you, even if it's just to say a quick hello. This podcast is obviously still very new, so honestly, anything you want to say about it, um, any feedback that you want to give, I am very appreciative of it all. Just quickly before we get into the episode, I will go over the social media channels that you can contact me on. You can email me um, on Zoe discovers at gmail.com you can also message me on instagram i always answer all of my dms on either at zoe discovers or at zoe discovers nk you can also find me on tiktok don't bother commenting or messaging me there though because i do not read my comments or messages on tiktok they are terrifying um i just post some fun short videos on there but yeah definitely it's not not the place to contact me or get my attention Instagram is definitely the way to go. You can also find me on Twitter, but I probably won't reply to you there. I don't use it too much, and Facebook as well. Now, this episode is going to be quite an interesting one. It was actually inspired by one of your questions. Um, every week, apart from when I have guests, I will be doing an episode. Basically, the theme is based on your questions that you have sent in. And I'm going to start doing a kind of questions from the public section um, at the end of this podcast. So I'm going to start doing that and hopefully for the next few weeks I'll carry on doing that um, where I answer a select few of your questions. I will also pick one kind of main question that I will base the whole podcast around um, every single week. And this question is basically based on one of your questions. Are you allowed to use iPhones in North Korea? So... I don't know, I'm not going to give you a spoiler alert, but maybe you can guess the answer already. I'm going to answer it very shortly. Um, but this question basically inspired this um, how strict is North Korea topic or theme this week. And what I intend to do is I intend to cover basically the things you can and can't do. We're going to go over three things, okay? So the first thing is going to be um, the things that are banned in North Korea, the things that you're not allowed to bring in. Then we're going to go over the rules, what you can and can't do. And then we're also going to talk about how safe it is in North Korea. All these three things kind of tie in together. I believe that North Korea is, you know, as long as you follow the rules, it is pretty safe. I've said that many times before. But despite the fact that I will be talking about rules and um, things that are banned and not banned for about an hour, you will be surprised about how not strict North Korea is. There are rules, but they are not as bad as you might be thinking. So I'm basically going to go over these three things, um, the main rules to follow, what things you can't bring in, and is it safe. It's going to be pretty similar. If, every, if any of you have ever been to North Korea before, it's going to have a pretty similar format to what you might experience during a tour briefing. And now, if you've never been to North Korea before, your tour company that you are going with will basically, well, they should request that you go on a tour briefing. Um, in Korea tours, it's absolutely mandatory that you um, go on these tour briefings and it's basically to make sure that you are aware of all of the rules, that you understand the rules and that all your questions are answered, you know what you can and can't bring in because going to North Korea is no joke, you know, I, I say that it's safe and I, I truly believe that it's safe but it's only safe if you follow the rules and that means that, you know, you have to understand the rules and then you also have to be willing to follow these rules. If you're not willing to follow the rules, then I very much recommend that you don't come to North Korea because it's not a place to mess around in. Um, you know, it's not your beach holiday uh, where you'll be just relaxing by the pool and drinking. It's a serious trip um, and it's intense, but it can be terribly fun. But I do want to give a bit of a disclaimer that although this sounds pretty similar to what you might get on a tour briefing, this is not your tour briefing. This is not a tour briefing. This is nothing... Um, to do with a tour briefing, you know. When you go to North Korea, if you go to North Korea, if you have been to North Korea, 
Um, your toe, toe briefing will be very different to this. It definitely won't be someone talking on a podcast. It will be interactional. Um, you'll kind of need that. And also things change all the time. So what I'm about to tell you, what I'm about to talk about is the rules that I know from, you know, working for a few years up until 2020. These rules may change. They may have got more strict. They may have got more relaxed. Either way, on a tour to North Korea, you need to make sure that you go through the up-to-date rules. Saying that, what I will go over today are you know, the main things, um, kind of like the standard things, the standard rules, what everyone kind of needs to know. And so let's get stuck in. Enough of me blabbering along. The first section that we're going to talk about is banned items in the DPR. Okay. So, you know, inspired by the question, are iPhones allowed in North Korea? Yes, iPhones are very much allowed. Apple products are completely fine. You know, jeans, Coca-Cola, all of that. It's absolutely fine. Um, these are big myths surrounding North Korea that you're not allowed to take these products in. I suppose that it comes from the fact that these products are American. Um, either way, they're absolutely fine. Um, you know, take your iPhones in, take your Android in. I didn't used to use an iPhone. I do now. I was using an Android. Um, still, that was absolutely fine. Um, I did used to use a MacBook. I still do now. Um, and I used to take that into North Korea. I don't anymore. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit, why I don't bring my laptop in anymore. But... Either way, it doesn't really matter. Apple products, Android products, they are all fine. Jeans, Coca-Cola, it's all fine. You can buy Coca-Cola in North Korea. Jeans, um, you won't see the North Koreans wearing them, um, but of course you can wear them apart from in a couple of circumstances where you have to wear formal attire. Jeans are not seen as formal attire in North Korea and therefore you are not permitted to wear them in a couple of places. For example, when you're going to pay respects to the leaders and go to sacred places such as Kumsisan Palace of the Sun Mausoleum. And I want to mention as well that I am talking about tourists and North Korea tourism when I think when I talk about things that are banned in North Korea. I'm not talking about the local North Koreans. That's an entirely different topic. This is all about North Korea tourism. You, when you go into North Korea, what you have to worry about in terms of following the rules and what is banned and if it is safe not about the local North Koreans. So iPhones, absolutely no problem. Um, they do have smartphones in North Korea. Actually, funnily enough, talking about iPhones and Android, they have um, two main phone brands in North Korea as well, one called Pyongyang and one called Arirang. And I found it very hilarious um, that the past few years, these have been kind of getting more proliferous. You know, you'll find them kind of all around Pyongyang. Some of the guides even have like two phones, one, maybe one Arirang, one Pyongyang, um, or two Pyongyang and two Arirang. And the funny thing about these is, is, you know, you can really see it's very similar to Apple and Android in that if you're an Apple user, you really are an Apple user, right? Like you're like, yeah, iPhone's the best. If you're Android, then you're Android. Um, and the same is for people using Arirang and Pyongyang phones, you know, like they will be really proud of their own one and say that, oh yeah, Arirang is good for this and good for this. It's not, you know, Pyongyang is, is nothing compared to it. It's like a whole, a whole thing, you know, just like Apple and Android. Um, I found it very amusing how they have this culture too in North Korea with, um, Arirang and with Pyongyang made phones. So... Let's really get onto the list of things that are banned now. So those things are definitely not banned. Um, things that are banned. I'm going to go over these things super quickly um, in list form. And you might be wondering, um, you know, these things are banned. Where is someone going to know that I'm bringing it in? Well, when you go into North Korea, you will go through a pretty rigorous customs check. Actually, it might be rigorous and it might be pretty chilled out. Recently, they started putting things through an x-ray machine in Dandong in the train station, um, but that was only recent. I don't know if they're still doing it. That only happened to me once. On the plane, um, they don't put things through, or they do put things through an x-ray machine, um, but they don't generally go through your stuff as much as on the train. Either way, um, there is a customs check, and sometimes it can be very, very rigorous. Sometimes it's not so rigorous at all. Either way, you definitely want to make sure that um, these banned things are not in your luggage. I'm not going to talk about the customs check so much because, um, I mean, it's it probably deserves its own podcast. Um, I might do it together with a podcast on transportation. Actually, I tried to record one the other day on transportation in the DPRK, talking about the trams, talking about the trolleybuses, stuff like that, with my good colleague Greg. Um, 
as a as a guest on the podcast. We I've already recorded that episode. It's going to come out in a few weeks, but um, we ended up talking for like an hour and a half just about air choreo. So um, yeah, we never even got into the other transport systems. So <laughs> um, maybe that'll come out on a different episode. So I'm not going to dwell on the customs checks, but just know that there are customs checks. So firstly, the thing that you have to worry about, one of the main things that you have to worry about is GPS. GPS devices, okay? This one is really tricky because if you have any electronic device now, they all have GPS on them, right? Um, Watches, phones, cameras, stuff like that. The thing is here is they're mainly worried about single GPS devices, okay? Um, if they ask you for GPS and if they ask you anything, they're going to ask you for GPS or this second thing, which I'm about to talk about. Just say no. Um, and, you know, if you really want to, you can turn off the GPS on your devices um, and then you can you can show them that it has no GPS. Right. And you're not lying to them saying that you don't have GPS, but they are mainly worried about GPS devices. So um, just make sure that you're not bringing in any separate device for that one. And yeah, turn off your GPS as you are going through. The second and arguably more important and more serious thing if you do bring it in is um, Bibles or religious texts. It's absolutely not permitted to bring in any religious material, especially Bibles, into North Korea. Don't even think about it. Um, don't have anything downloaded on your phone, any apps, um, any books, stuff like that. Just don't bring it in. Um, GPS and Bibles are the two things that they will probably ask you about. That doesn't mean that the rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about is not banned, but these are the two big things. Make sure not to bring them in. Okay, number three on the list is Korean language material. That's mainly because it's probably going to be, you know, South Korean material, if it is Korean language material. If it's North Korean and you've bought it in North Korea, if it's, for example, your second time in North Korea or third time or whatever, then feel free to bring it back in. They might be a bit confused, but it's fine, whatever. But generally speaking, anything in the Korean language that includes any books, publications, um, films, uh, dramas, stuff like that, don't bring it in. No Korean material. Nothing in the Korean language, especially if you don't speak it. You have no idea what it might say. It could say something extremely offensive. This gets pretty annoying for me because um, I study Korean. Um, and actually, my colleagues laugh about this. Greg laughs about this. But I study when I am on tour as well. Despite how long the days are and tiring they are, I need my own time and my own study time. And so I really appreciate getting up an hour earlier than everyone else and studying Korean. Um, this becomes a bit problematic for me because all of these study books um, are obviously you know, if they're not made outside of the DPRK, then they're going to be South Korean oriented. And this may not seem like a big thing, but there may be a lot of little things that could cause offense to North Korea that you might not realize. For example, anything to do with studying Korean is always going to have the word Hangugol, which is, you know, the Korean language. However, the important difference here is that Hangugo is the Korean language in South Korean Korean. In North Korea, you would never hear the word Hangugo because anything to do with Han is South Korea in North Korea. In North Korea, instead, they say Chosono or Chosonmal. Uh, it just means Korean, but in the North Korea version. Equally, you won't hear this in South Korea. And so me bringing in my study materials for Korean, it brings a problem because maybe it has some South Korea place names on it. Maybe it has, you know, the word Korean written on it somewhere. And obviously this is South Korean orientated. So these things can cause offense. So I have to either, you know, scrub some things out, chop some bits of paper up or, um, or just, you know, not bring them in sometimes. Um, and I'd really recommend for you guys, you know, just, just leave it all at home. So that was the third thing. The fourth thing. Uh, which is kind of to do with the last one, is any materials or maps or just anything related to South Korea and also probably Japan. South Korea is obviously a little bit more sensitive, so you don't want to bring in any, you know, music, any films, any videos, um, any maps, any flags, certainly, uh, on South Korea. It's the same goes for Japan, you know, don't bring in any maps, stuff like that. Just kind of try and stay away from anything South Korean or Japanese. Obviously, if you've been to Japan beforehand, maybe you went to Japan before your tour and you have like some sweets and snacks and stuff like that, that's fine. You also find a lot of Japanese products on sale in North Korea. Um, but 
stick away from any maps or any media. Speaking of media, let's take us to our next one. So this is the number five. Um, any media on North Korea. That includes films, books, documentaries, stuff like that. I don't think I have to explain this one. It's pretty obvious. But yeah, stay away from any um, media that has anything to do with North Korea. Even if you think that it might be, you know... Um, something documenting the greatness of North Korea or, you know, something like that. The chances are if it's a foreign publication, um, it probably has some things in it that the North Koreans might deem offensive. Um, so it's always best to keep these things out of the country. Um, at Corio Tours, they offer that you can store some of your stuff in the office. Um, you know, for example, if you have some things that you think will um, are not permitted to go into the country, you can leave it and store it at the office. But it's best just to not bring it in in the first place. Okay, number six. Politically sensitive material. And that includes books and flags, as I kind of mentioned before. Just don't bring in, in any flags. Um, you know, kind of watch out for your t-shirts and stuff that they don't have flag prints on stuff like that if if it seems like you're making a political statement then it becomes an issue so for example if you go into North Korea and wearing a a t-shirt with a South Korean flag on it then we have a problem if you go in and um and realize that um you forgot something that has um I don't know another country's flag on or whatever for other countries it's generally pretty fine but you know just better safe than sorry Leave those flags at home, um, leave those politically sensitive books at home, for example, anyone studying politics or interested in politics, just leave it all at home. It's always best, you know, you're not going to have any time to read in North Korea anyway. If in doubt, ask, that is the main thing. Um, if in doubt, ask, or if in doubt, also just leave it behind in the first place. Okay, the next thing is pornography. So pornography is not permitted in North Korea, it's banned and you should not bring it in. It's also best not to bring in your laptop and to make sure that you check your photos beforehand um, and that you sign out of social media, okay? So this is not necessarily things that are banned. Laptops are not banned in North Korea. Um, having photos are not is not banned in North Korea and being signed into your social media is not banned in North Korea. But... Have a think about what your friends and family did when you told them that they were going that you were going to North Korea. Did they send you a lot of funny memes on Messenger or on Facebook? Have a think because your phone may be checked on the way in by security officers and you know they might press some buttons and WhatsApp might come up, Messenger might come up and if the first thing that they see of you is that you know, you have a funny meme of their great leader, then it's not going to make a great first impression. So um, make sure that you log out of your social medias. That's the best thing. You also don't know what your friends are going to send you. Um, sometimes you won't have internet in North Korea, but sometimes it can happen that just as you cross the border, when you go in from the train, um, just as you cross the border into Sinuiju, which is where the customs check takes place, that's only 10 minutes away from China. And it can happen, depending on where you are in the train, um, if you are, because the train is very long. If you stay kind of near the back of the train and closer to China, then you still might have signal on your phone from China if you get Chinese phone signal. If you start texting your friends saying that you're in North Korea or if they know that you're going there, then again, they might think it's hilarious to send you some memes and funny pictures. This is the kind of thing that can get you into trouble. So just make sure that you sign out of your social media. It's, it's best to do. Basically, just check your photos for any um, you know, of the aforementioned memes and stuff like that. I don't know, some phones like um, save it automatically from WhatsApp and stuff. You want to make sure that those are deleted and then deleted again from your deleted folder. Um, you also want to check your photos for any of the um, things I mentioned before. Um, you know, I don't know, pictures of flags, um, pornography, um, Bible verses, stuff like that. It's all not permitted. So make sure to check your photos um, and delete all of that before you head in. And now I say it's best not to bring your laptop, basically because, um, you know, they do laptop checks and <laughs> laptops kind of contain a lot more, um, a lot more documents and a lot more documents that you could have forgotten about than um, your phones do. 
and I have had it once where my laptop got checked and because it was only once after I visited for over 20 times then <laughs> yeah I hadn't I, I'd got complacent with this I didn't clear my laptop at all and I you know as soon as he asked to see it I was like oh my gosh I have no idea what's on there I watch Korean dramas all the time um, I have so many photos on there um, of of South Korea, of North Korea. I mean, of photos of North Korea is fine, but you know th that sinking feeling in your chest when you're like, this man could be looking at anything on my laptop. Um, I am terrified. Luckily, it was fine. Um, one of the guides came over, and you know, we kind of hurried him up. Um, and also, he has no idea how to work like the Mac and stuff. So he was just going through my downloads, which you know, it's kind of a little bit more terrifying, if anything. Um, <laughs> I have no, I, I can never remember what's in my downloads. Um, but yeah, it's scary. So, um, and a bit nerve wracking. So, hey, just don't bring in your laptop. You probably won't need it. You won't have time to be, you won't have any internet. So, you know, you won't be doing any work. You won't have time to be doing any work. Trust me, a tour to North Korea is tiring. You will just want to relax in the evening. So, don't worry about that. Uh, just don't bring in your laptop. And finally, the last thing that is kind of banned in North Korea um, is not cameras, um, but you do need to watch out for what kind of camera you're bringing in. So with GoPros, with um, big DSLRs, um, everything like that is fine. Drones are not permitted. Um, with GoPros, we recommend that you basically try and make them look as big as possible. You know, all these new cameras and stuff that are coming out, they're all tiny and they're incredibly practical. But to a North Korean customs officer, when you're bringing in like the tiniest little GoPro, it looks like a little spy camera or something like that. And that would probably make them feel pretty nervous. So um, if you put it in a case, make it seem as big as possible, that's all fine. I've never seen any issues with that. Um, there is a limit to the lens size that you can bring in on your camera. So the size of that lens is 150 millimeters. So you can't bring in a lens greater than 150 millimeters. But apart from that, I mean, you know, also no one is going around with a tape measure. Like it's not as if these customs officers have like a tape measure to see that your lens is 150 millimeters. So like, don't worry too much, but also, you know, do follow that rule um, and keep the lens smaller than 150 millimeters. Um, Otherwise, in terms of cameras, they're pretty chill. You know, there, there are so many new cameras and stuff like that out. I've taken um, some tourists a few years ago with 360 cameras. They're absolutely fine. GoPros are all good. Um, but yeah, drones, don't don't bring your drones in. Um, and to be honest, I think that's it. Um, I may have missed some stuff. If I have, then, you know, do feel free to um, to give me a message on social media. But this is definitely the main stuff that you should watch out for. So that's GPS, Bible, Korean language materials, anything about South Korea or Japan, anything on North Korea, any politically sensitive material, pornography, and you want to make sure that you check your laptop, check your phone, and make sure that you have, um, you know, permitted camera equipment. Also in terms of cameras, I just want to say that, you know, unless you're like a professional photographer and unless you're a big, you know, you're a big photo kind of person, it's always best to bring in the smaller camera because you attract less attention. So when I was doing all the vlogging and stuff in North Korea, back back in the days I could still go there, um, I would just use my phone. And I did have um, another, like, um, one of those little DJI Osmos camera things, um, like a little handheld camera. And I did use one of those a few times, but I would find that it makes the North Koreans pretty nervous. Um, if you just pick up your phone um, and take pictures and um, take videos and stuff like that, you're you are far less likely to be attracting attention. Um, so, you know, for sure, bring your big cameras, bring your big DSLRs, whatever you want. But you don't, if you don't have to, then I would advise you to just stick with your smaller cameras. It always attracts less attention. So on to the second part, uh, we're going to talk about the rules. You know, how strict are these rules in North Korea, what you can and can't do. You know, there are actually very few rules that you have to stick with. And 
I always, it always surprises me. I always think, did I forget something? But actually, there, there are very few rules. So they're kind of easy to remember, which makes me curious as to how some people forget them. Whilst we are on the topic of photography and cameras and stuff like that, let's start on the rules for photography. Which, I guess, is, you know, some of the most important rules that everyone's really interested in. Because you want to be taking photos, right? Three main rules on photography. Um, and there are other rules in random places, um, but these are the three main rules. Number one, no photos of military. Number two, no photos of construction sites. And this is for a couple of reasons, you know, construction sites usually have military working on them. And also, you know, North Korea wants to give its nice image. You know, things that look half built and not complete don't provide a nice image. That's basically it. Um, and also, not photographing military is a pretty normal thing in a lot of countries. The third one of this is arguably the most important one, and that is when you are taking a picture of the any image of the leaders that includes photos um you know paintings portraits and maybe of and also statues you have to make sure that you get their full image in so if it's a full statue get the full body in don't chop off its head don't chop off its legs um if it's a painting then make sure that you get that full painting in that's very important and you know if the guides don't think that you're adhering to that rule then they may check your phone and ask you to delete these pictures if they think that you've broken the rules in terms of breaking the rules, we're going to get onto that in a little bit as we talk about how safe it is in North Korea, but really, as long as you only accidentally break these rules, especially when it comes into photography and stuff like that, you know, it's not a one shot and you're out kind of thing, like, you will be, you know, humans make mistakes, and the Koreans understand that as well. Um, we'll get onto that in a minute anyway, but if you accidentally take a photo um, of a portrait and um, it's it's bad or whatever um, and the guides ask you to delete it then like don't worry you know as long as you're fine deleting it then it's fine actually on my first trip in North Korea I took a photo that was not permitted and I was asked to delete it um, and that photo was really interesting you know it's just something that you'd never think of um, but I was in Rason for my first visit and we walked up a hill um, to go and visit um, the uh, Grand Monument statue so that is the um, statues of the leaders Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il and they stand tall over the city um, and you basically go up this hill to go and see them and pay your respects um, and so we did that and we took pictures and then I turned around and I saw a beautiful view of the city so what do I want to do I want to take a picture I took this picture and then the guy came up to me and you know asked me to delete it and I was wondering why and he explained to me that you know the it's kind of disrespectful to do that because actually the main reason why we're up there and the beauty of this area is not that city view in the background, but it's the statues, it's the leaders. And, you know, okay, I understand, so I deleted it. So, you know, that's how it works. If you take a photo that's not permitted, that's what goes on. It's fine. If you continue to break the rules, that is a different, you know, that's... <laughs> then it's different. So those are the main rules on photography. Um, the other places that you can't take photos include, you know, just random places. For example, the theater or an art gallery may not permit you to take photos just like in any other country. Um, for example, going to see the circus or something like that. Sometimes they don't like you to take photos. Um, and there are some places that you are not permitted to take photos full stop. And that is the um, Kumsa Sam Palace of the Sun Memorial Palace, um, also the, um, what's it called, um, the War Museum, which is a terrible shame because honestly, that museum is incredible. I think everyone wants to take pictures when they're in there. Um, and sometimes, for example, when you go and see the mass games, um, sometimes it's not permitted to take photos there. Um, and that's basically the only reason why that happens. Obviously, everyone loves the mass games. The mass games are those um, big, it's, you know, by the Guinness Book of World Records, it's the biggest human gymnastics performance um, in the world. You've got tens of thousands of people take part in this massive performance in what they call as the biggest stadium in the world. Um, it's, it's a truly grand and impressive performance. Of course, everyone wants to take pictures there. Um, however, if you go and visit on the first night, um, and by the way, these mass games, they're also known as Arirang. Um, actually, Arirang is the name of the mass games. So some people use them interchangeably, Arirang and mass games. Arirang is one form of the mass games. Um, in previous years, recently, we've had um, glorious 
country and the people's land, I think. I can't remember the translations. Anyway, Arirang was the Mass Games a few years ago. Now, you know, they have different names for these performances. So anyway, they're amazing. You want to take pictures. Tourists get incredibly annoyed when they find out if they are visiting the Mass Games on the first night, on the opening night, when they find out they cannot take pictures. This is a bit of a trade-off, however, because if you can't take pictures at the Mass Games, it's probably for a reason, and that reason is pretty big. Um, that's probably because uh, Marshal Kim Jong-un is in attendance, and therefore you are not permitted to take photos. Actually, the first time that I attended the Mass Games with Marshal Kim Jong-un there, it was so strict. I have never been through such strict procedures in North Korea ever. Um, we spent hours, like pretty much half of the day, preparing for these strict procedures. It was the point in, I think it was 2019 where, or 2018, where the Mass Games had been, had a bit of a hiatus, you know, it hadn't been on for the past few years and they just decided to start it back up again. And I happened to be there on a tour for the opening night of it. And usually the opening night, um, previously tourists were not permitted to attend because Kim Jong-un would be there. Now we were permitted to attend um, and we didn't know if he would be there or not. However, we went through about half a day of security. You know, we were not permitted to bring anything into that stadium. Absolutely anything. The, the, from, you know, coins to tissues to lighters, um, absolutely, even our phones, um, we had to leave at the hotel. You know, everything we had to leave at the hotel, not even on the bus, on the grounds. So very, very strict. Um, and then sure enough, he was in attendance. The following year, um, it was a bit crazy. I happened to be in North Korea. This was not a Mass Games tour. I happened to be in North Korea for the opening night of the Mass Games. And so we never even planned to go there as a tourist group. But, you know, I pitched it to my group. I asked them, do you want to go see the Mass Games? Of course, they were very happy to, even though the tickets can be a bit pricey. They were very happy to go. And I guess they were a bit annoyed because um, I then told them that they weren't allowed to take photos there. And that, that happened with the previous year as well. You know, everyone was pretty annoyed by the extensive security procedures and then also the fact that they couldn't take photos. Um, actually, to be honest, I prefer the mass games without photos because you can actually just enjoy it and watch it without having hundreds of phones in your face. But anyway, um, so on the second time that I went to the mass games on the first night, um, there was very, very little security. It was really interesting. You know, we just kind of rocked up to the stadium. Um, we were told to keep our phones on the bus. We were told, you know, but we were only told that as soon as we got to the stadium. So before we got to the stadium, everything was pretty chilled out. I decided to wear like a really fancy joggery, like a North Korean um, dress. And I also asked my um, guides to wear one as well. So, you know, just so we can dre get dressed up to go to the theater. I didn't think anything of it. Um, and I also, I definitely didn't think Kim Jong-un would be there because there was zero security um, on the approach. Um, it was only when our bus parked up at the stadium where we told, okay, guys, you know, you're not allowed to take your phones in. You have to leave everything on the bus. And, you know, I was like, okay, maybe someone important is here. But I, you know, I was telling everyone there is no way that Kim Jong-un would be here. I'd just gone through like half a day of security the previous year. Um, anyway, we go there and um, a lot of people still have their phones and cameras in there. Um, a lot of the Chinese groups, uh, obviously they didn't get the memo. They had their phones out and stuff and taking photos. Um, and sure enough, uh, Kim Jong-un, Marshal Kim Jong-un came in um, and took his seat in that little VIP area um, that, you know, you may also see on the news and in the media. Um, and that was uh, an incredible, incredible atmosphere. And afterwards, my female guides, who I was with, they thanked me so much. They were like, thank you for making us dress up. You know, we were so happy to be able to be nice and dressed up um, to see, you know, to see our marshal, to see our leader. Um, because for Koreans, you know, it's like a once in a lifetime thing that they get to see him. Um, and for foreigners, I mean, you know, he's too sacred to be seen by foreigners. So it's, it's in their eyes, it's not something that he's not something that foreigners should see. Um, but yeah, for Koreans, they, they were very happy. It's a very, very big and sacred thing. So anyway, 
that's another situation in which photography may be banned. But generally, as long as you stick to those three main rules, no military, no construction sites, and be careful when you're taking pictures of the leaders, you can take photos anywhere. And that includes outside of the bus, um, on the plane, things like that. All good. So apart from photography, there are a few other rules. Firstly, sticking together as a group and no sneaking off at night. As everyone is probably very much aware, when you go to North Korea, you have to stick together as a group. You can't walk around by yourself. You have to be with your North Korean guides at all times. This is very true. This is, you know, not a big myth that I'm about to bust. You do have to be with your guides at all times. However, this does not mean that you will be stuck to your guide like glue you know <laughs> um there are some places in north korea that we kind of walk around you know it's basically a lot of it is common sense you have to stick with your guides okay but if you want to you know take a photo and everyone's walking ahead then generally it's okay that you just take that extra few seconds take a photo and then catch up with the group especially if you've been with the guides for a longer period of time, like maybe you've been there for like a week or two already and you've kind of gained each other's trust, then if the group go out of sight for a minute whilst you're taking a photo, it's not the biggest issue, you know? As long as you're not trying to escape from the group, it's absolutely fine. I don't have my eyes on you all the time. The guides don't have their eyes on you all the time. The chances are you'll be in a group of about 10 to 20 people. So we can't keep an eye on everyone. We trust that you will follow the rules. And I really hope that you do follow the rules. So it's about a little bit about common sense and not about breaking or bending those rules, but just kind of understanding them and understanding why they're there. You have to stick together as a group. But if you want to go over, maybe cross the street to take a photo, if you wanted to cross the street, maybe ask your guide or something like that, take a photo. Um, if if you wanted to stick behind, um, if you got caught chatting with some North Koreans on the street, I don't know. It's generally fine. Just don't do it all the time. And if you do get told off for it, then that's because you've pushed it too far. And I would recommend in the future to be a lot more careful um, and to basically make sure that you're not pushing those rules again. Because if you, you know, if you get one telling off and then you get a telling off again for the same thing, then it starts to get a little bit more serious. Um, also, when you're in the hotel, the guides are not around you all the time. When you're in the hotel, that's your free time. And you'd be surprised how much fun you can have in those hotels. There's karaoke, there's sometimes swimming pools, spas, massages, you can get a suit tailored, all of this stuff. So <laughs> there's a lot to do in the hotel. People are usually terrified. Oh my gosh, we have to spend the whole night like in the hotel. You get back at like eight o'clock in the evening, seven o'clock in the evening, or even nine o'clock in the evening. Um, you're really, really tired. Don't worry, it's not going to be an awful night in the hotel that you're, you know, locked into. Or just on that note, like, you know, for example, like if you wanted to go out and like have a cigarette after a meal or something like that, you can go out and have a cigarette after a meal. You can stand outside smoking. You don't need to have a guide with you for that one. But again, if you were to say to the guide, oh, I'm just going to go out for a cigarette and then walk off up and down the street, and then the guide find out about that, then both you and the guide are going to be in trouble. If you go outside and have a cigarette and just stand there having a cigarette, watching the world go by without a guide next to you, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so when you're in the hotel, there's a lot to do. Make sure that you don't go out at night. Um, the guides say, you know, if you want to walk outside, um, then come and find us. Um, but I think that they don't really mean that. They're, they're not going to, it's their chilled out time. They're not going to take you around for a walk in the evening. They're tired, we're tired. Leave them alone, you know, have some fun in the evening. Go to a bar um, in the hotel. Um, yeah, it's good fun. There's lots to do. So don't worry about, you know, being locked in the hotel at night. You will be knackered. You'll be very tired. It's early mornings, late evenings. Speaking to local Koreans, okay? So this is not a rule as such that you need to watch out for. But it's something that a lot of people ask me, um, can I speak to the local North Koreans? Um, yes, you can. The biggest hurdle that you might find here is that you don't speak Korean. If you do speak Korean, then go for it. However, firstly, you should not presume that a local North Korean will want to speak to you. <laughs> um, they, it might be the first time that they've ever seen a foreigner. They might be nervous to talk to you. And also, how many times do you go to a foreign country and just stop someone on the street and start talking to them? Um, it's a bit uncomfortable, right? It would make everyone feel uncomfortable. 
if the situation allows for it, like for example, you're at a bar and maybe you're standing at the bar um, waiting for your beers and a North Korean is next to you and they seem like, you know, they're, they're laughing or joking around with you, then for sure, <laughs> strike up a conversation with them. Why not? But yeah, I wouldn't recommend just stopping someone on the street. Uh, that's incredibly awkward in whatever circumstance you're in and they will probably be a little terrified. But there is no rule against speaking to them. Um, that's mainly what I wanted to point out here. And in terms of speaking to North Koreans as well, there's another big point that I want to bring up, um, which is a big question. It's probably one of the biggest questions that I get when I'm giving these tour briefings is that, you know, people want to know how they can speak to the tour guides. And I find it so funny. I mean, I kind of get it as well, but like people always ask me, Zoe, you know, um, how, how do I speak to the guides? What do I, what do I speak to them about? Um, you know, how, how do I interact with the North Korean guides? And I, I totally, you know, it's, I, I get it. I do, I get it. But I find it so funny every time um, because, I mean, for me, it just shows me how much we kind of dehumanize um, or how much the media dehumanizes North Koreans because it's so easy to forget that just normal people, you speak to the North Korean guides like you would speak to a normal person. Okay, there are some rules on things that we recommend that you don't talk to them about, which I'll get onto in a second, but my main advice for like how to speak to the guides is just like a normal person. So when you first meet them, it, sometimes you'll be staying for two day tours, sometimes it'll be two weeks. Obviously two weeks you'll get to know them a lot better. Either way, you take things slow, right? When you first meet a person, you maybe give them a handshake, um, Ask them their name, ask them where they come from in North Korea, ask them, you know, where they went to university, maybe ask them about their family, do they have a husband, do they have a wife, do they have kids, let them ask them about you, tell them about your life, just have some small talk and treat them like normal humans that you're trying to get to know, because believe me, the biggest thing that you're going to learn about North Korea is through the guides, it's not through seeing the museums, it's not through... Um, you know, visiting the famous sites, it's by speaking to the guides and learning about the country and about the people that live in it. So these people are going to be your friend. Buy them a beer in the evening and, you know, you will discover so much about the country. But <laughs> don't freak them out, you know? Don't, don't, don't go straight in with a handshake and be like, so what do you think about the weapons testing program? You know, it's totally fine to speak to them about nuclear weapons and testing weapons and rockets and stuff like that. They're actually super proud of their, you know, of their program. Um, so it's fine to talk to them about, about that, but I just wouldn't recommend it on like, you know, your first ever conversation um, <laughs> would alienate them a little bit. I'm sure it would alienate anyone. Um, there are some topics that we recommend not to speak to them about. Um, the first one is um, don't speak to them about the private lives lives of the leaders and that's basically just because they don't know much about it it's not like you know the white house in the u.s where um everyone knows where the president lives and stuff like that they do not know much about the private lives of the leaders you know they didn't even know kim jong-un's birthday until dennis rodman accidentally kind of started singing happy birthday to him um when he was there uh, during a basketball game very amusing um you know they don't know um how many kids he has uh you know stuff like this they, they don't know much about him um so don't ask um secondly religious stuff um kind of stay away from those topics politically sensitive topics obviously you know you can ask them about how their country is run and the politics behind it and stuff like that but um, definitely stay clear of um, saying anything offensive to, or that could be deemed offensive towards their leaders towards their country um, but you can for sure have like some you know um, debates or like um, political conversations if you want to find out more about the political system but definitely stay away from um, anything that could be deemed as offensive and anything that could be deemed as you know saying anything bad about their country and that's pretty much it you know you can talk to the guides generally about any anything and if you are ever unsure about what you can and can't ask the guides then you come to me you know or like whoever you know your your tour leader is um just ask them you know can i talk to the guides about this and no question is too stupid so if you ever have something that you're worried about that you don't know you can do you can don't know if you can ask the guides just come to me no question is too small a couple more things and these are like 
kind of um, rules that you might come across as and when. Um, and you might find a lot of the rules um, you will learn in the country as they are happening. For example, uh, newspapers. So if you buy a newspaper, newspapers usually have the image of the leaders on them. Do make sure to not, whatever you do, scrunch up that newspaper or put up put the newspaper in the bin. You have to fold it nicely so that it doesn't fold along any image of Kim Jong-un if he's on there. Um, and do not put that newspaper in the bin. This happened to me once um, when I was in the Sosan Hotel. Um, we actually had to write a letter of apology um, because one of the tourists, they put their newspaper in the bin. And you, again, it's absolutely fine. Nothing like super bad happened. It's just, you know, it was an innocent mistake. It wasn't a deliberate thing. Um, and the Koreans understood that, but they did request a letter of apology, which we wrote and then translated um, and then gave it to the um, to the hotel and the cleaning staff. So that was all fine. Um, otherwise, make sure to not point at um, any images of the leaders. And that includes the badges. This is a big one because a lot of people might want to put, point at the badges of the leaders. Um, you know, and ask, hey, um, you know, do you wear this badge all the time? Or, you know, you maybe you have some questions about the badges from the leaders. Basically, just don't point at them. It's it's rude to point, you know, that that's true in, in various cultures. Um, and same goes for the images of the leaders, okay? Just don't point at them. So, I mean, I've probably missed some of the rules as well. And, you know, I'm so sorry to my colleagues at Choreo Tours if I have not done this justice in terms of the rules. Um, like I said, this is not a tour briefing. I will have missed out a bit. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I've covered the main bases in terms of rules um, and things that are banned in North Korea. And I guess, like, so, you know, how strict is it in North Korea? Is it very strict? I guess, yes, to a certain extent, it is very strict, but also, I think, not to the extent that you will be thinking. Um, you can actually do a lot more, you can actually bring in a lot more than you may have previously thought. And finally, we move on to the third section of this, which is, is it safe? I could probably do a whole podcast on this, actually, but, you know, I want to cover it a little bit whilst I'm talking about what, how strict it is, what's banned, what's not, um, and the rules. When people hear about my job, um, they're usually terrified, you know, oh my gosh, is it safe? Um, can you actually visit there? You know, everyone's terrified for me. I'm, I'm fine. Um, thanks for your concern, but it is very safe. Um, and it's something that I always say, and like, I mean absolutely no offense here, and I'm from there, so I feel like I could say it, but um, I always say it's safer than visiting Liverpool, at least, you know? And for the U and the UK for that matter, you know, it's, it's as long as you follow the rules and as long as you don't bring in anything banned, as long as you have no malintentions when you go there, it's a safe country to visit, okay? There are just rules that you have to follow. If you follow those rules, it's safe. You don't have to worry about things like walking around at dark and getting mugged. You don't have to think about being pickpocketed. Um, you know, all of these things you might have to worry about in a different country, um, scammed and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about in North Korea. So, you know, it's a lot safer than visiting various other countries. Um, but at the same time, you are visiting North Korea, okay? You have to make sure that you follow the rules correctly. If in doubt, always ask. Do make sure that you follow those rules. Going to North Korea is no is no joke, it's no lighthearted thing, but at the same time, you know, it is very safe. Um, the company should brief you beforehand. You are in the, for, for Korea Tours, for any tour company that runs tours to North Korea, safety is an absolute priority. So we make sure that we brief you, we let you know exactly what you can and can't do. It's then up to you to follow these rules. If you think that you're not going to be able to follow these rules when you're in North Korea, if you think that, you know, you'll, you'll try and bend those rules and push them and stuff like that, you should not be going to North Korea. That is not why you're going. You're not going in order to bend the rules, in order to push the rules. There has not been one point that I felt unsafe in North Korea, but there are points where I feel a little bit nervous when those rules are stricter. And I don't feel nervous for myself. Um, you know, I felt nervous when people are checking my phone or my laptop. Um, even though I know that there's nothing on there, it's just, it just kind of makes you feel a bit nervous. 
I've never felt unsafe, um, but you know, I do feel a little bit nervous, not for me, but for, for other people. Um, for example, when we go to a, a place that's a little bit stricter, um, comes to San Palace of the Sun is probably the strictest place that we visit. I keep mentioning it. It is the um, mausoleum the where um, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il lie in state. So you can imagine how kind of sacred this place is. Um, it's kind of a case of, you know, you feel bad if you cough or sneeze, um, <laughs> which is ridiculous because of course you can cough or sneeze if you need to. But, uh, you know, it's very quiet marble floors and it's all very proper and everyone has to stand in lines and stuff like that. It is very strict. And so I feel nervous during times like that sometimes, especially if I've got some mischievous people in my group that I know will probably try and bend the rules a little bit too much. Um, but generally, um, I can say North Korea is safe. It's a safe country as long as you follow the rules. And I touched on this before, but the last thing that I'll say is, you know, if you break a rule, depending on what rule it is and depending on how you break it, if you accidentally take a photo in a place that you shouldn't have done, then it's fine. You know, everyone makes mistakes. Um, the guides will understand. Everyone's just human. Maybe you didn't hear them say no photos, blah, blah, blah. If you continue doing that, if you do it a second time, then the guides might think, okay, that's a bit weird. We already told you actually nicely and politely. Now we're going to tell you a little bit more harsher. Please don't take a photo there. If you keep doing this several times, then it's not an accident anymore. You are breaking these rules deliberately. That's when things start to become um, a bigger issue. That's when you might be sat down in the evening and we might ask to look through your photos. Um, the guides might ask you to delete some of the photos. And same goes for the other rules as well. If you start walking off a little bit too much and the guides are like, hey, you know, actually, can you try and stick with the group a little bit more? Maybe you can walk a little bit faster to keep up with the group. They will say it very politely and diplomatically like that. You know, it's fine. But if you do it several times and if there are several times where we can't find you because you've walked off, then OK, it becomes a problem. Um, you are becoming a danger to yourself, to the guides and also to the entire group. OK, you're on a group tour. That means that you have to follow the group. You have to stick with the itinerary and if you don't think that you can do that then you could book onto a private tour or you could just not come because you don't want to be putting the group um, at, at risk. Um, you know, it's not only your own safety and the safety of the guides but it is the group as well. So there have been a couple of points. Um, there's been one time memorable for me that um, I was very nervous about one of my... Um, one of the tourists in my group, um, to the point at which I was ready if they made one more um, mistake or if they did one more thing to make me feel like they were a liability to the group, I was very prepared to send them home. Um, more than very prepared to send them home. <laughs> so that can happen. Um, but generally, if you break the rules accidentally, depending on what rule it is, it's generally all good. Don't worry about it too much. It's safe. So is now the last section of this podcast which, where I will try and um, I'm going to start um, answering some questions that you guys have given me on social media. Um, I'm going to try and do this every single podcast episode. So you can bring in, send in your questions to me and I will try and answer them. Um, let's see how many we can get through today in just like a five minute time. So firstly, first question. Would you advise against government employees of a Western country on visiting North Korea? So firstly, I wouldn't advise against it, um, but I would um, ask your employers um, their opinion. So I know that, um, you know, it depends what kind of government employee you are. Um, for example, if you are a diplomat or something like that, I know that you have to have clearance with your employees if there is no um, embassy of your country in North Korea, because then obviously, you know, I think, you, I don't know how being a diplomat works, but then you have to travel, um, I think, as a normal person, not as a diplomat. Um, anyway, as a government employee, I would always recommend um, just asking your employer um, their opinions, and it depends how high up you are and stuff like that. Um, just ask your employers um, and get their opinion, but I wouldn't advise against it. Um, and the only problems that you might encounter will not be on the North Korean side, but from your employer's side. Second question, um, is it hard to become a student of the Korean language in the DPRK? No and yes. So actually Choreo Tours runs a tour that's like pretty much a month long um, 
uh, are we used to at least uh, yeah and you can definitely inquire about it if you'd be interested um doing a tour that um, allows you to study and live in North Korea for a month where you study at the university there um, and you can learn the Korean language. Now if you want to become an actual, that's obviously just like an exchange program, right? If you want or like, you know, just kind of like a, a one month language kind of trip. If you wanted to um, become a student, like a full-time actual student at the university. I get so many inquiries about this, like at least once a month someone asks me, can I study in the DPRK? It, there's no solid answer, but generally it's a no, sometimes it's yes. It's very hard to get into a university as a foreigner um, in the DPRK. There have been, in previous times, exchange programs that go on from different universities. Um, it has been more open in the past. Um, I also do know some foreigners who have studied at the universities there and done entire degree programs there, but you have to have connections. It would be very, very difficult for you to, um, as just a, a random person, to email the universities and um, try and ask for a place there. Um, you kind of have to have some kind of connection there that can help you to secure a place, um, but even then it's incredibly difficult and you know I would advise you to to find a different university so it, it's hard to study at university in in North Korea it's not impossible as a foreigner um, but it's pretty much impossible um, in terms of studying the language though um, yeah you can you can take trips there to do language courses so let's do the last question here can we travel alone to the DPRK I'm pretty sure that I have covered this in um, in this in this um, episode, but basically, uh, no, you cannot travel alone to the DPRK. You have to travel with two North Korean guides at all times. Um, you, if if going as a tourist group is something that you're against, or if you don't like being in a group, then you could travel in a private tour. So in that respect, you can travel like alone in a private tour, but you would still have the North Korean guides with you. Um, it wouldn't just be, you know, you you walking around uh, the DPRK. And so many people ask me, why? Why is this a rule? Why is it like that? And to be honest, um, this is one of those things where I'm like, that, that doesn't really seem to be, I think I covered this in the first episode, there doesn't really seem to be any immediate reason for this, apart from the fact that it's a very secretive country. Um, but either way, um, yeah, it's not permitted to go by yourself. Um, you should first book through a Western kind of, um, tour company, and then you will be sent to go with, um, with the North Korean tour, co tour company. And so I hope that answers your question on, um, you know, can we travel alone to North Korea? And for the other two questions as well, thank you for sending those in, and I hope that those questions were answered. If they're not, or if you want to know more, then do feel free to contact me on all social medias. I'll go over them again super quickly at Zoe Discovers or at Zoe Discovers NK on pretty much every social media platform. You'll be able to find me on those handles, um, including Twitter, but I don't really use it. If you actually want to reply, do message me on Instagram and also um, email me on Zoe Discovers at gmail.com. Calm. I do reply to everything, even if it might take me a couple of days to get through everything. So thank you very much for sticking with me through this episode of How Strict Is North Korea? Hope it kind of answered a lot of questions. Um, I do hope that it didn't make a, a tour to North Korea sound too scary. Um, my aim with this was to kind of show, you know, the main important things that you need to know when visiting North Korea. I, in my opinion, it is a lot less strict than what a lot of people think, and that's the feedback that I get from a lot of people, is it's not so strict. If I made it sound super scary, that's because I want you to take this tour very seriously. It's not a light-hearted holiday on a beach. It is a tour to North Korea, but at the same time, if you follow the rules, it can be very fun, and it is very fun. We have great fun on tour. <laughs> We really do. So I am really looking forward to those borders opening again. I'm really looking forward to recording a few podcast episodes there. Um, and mainly, I'm really I'm really looking forward to having some um, Taedonggang beer with my North Korean colleagues. 
maybe that'll come later this year, maybe I'll have to wait another year, but let's see. For now, I'm going to leave you. I hope you enjoyed the episode and tune in next week for the next episode, episode four of the podcast, Discover North Korea. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week.